welcome to episode 25 of Concussion Chats. My name is Taya. Concussion Chats is a podcast hosted by the McGill students for the Concussion Legacy Foundation with the help of Nick from Concussion Talk Podcast. We are dedicated to providing strength and hope to those suffering from concussions through sharing experiences. Today I have a recording of Alan. Um, Alan is a former professional boxer that now coaches. For years, he had told his wife that something still wasn't right in his head. When his wife and children noticed um, him becoming more angry, confused, depressed, and showing inappropriate behaviors, they took him to the doctor. After numerous doctors, CT scans, and MRIs, he was diagnosed with dementia pugilistica. Um, and probable CTE at John Hopkins in 2017. Since then, Alan has started writing poems about his experience and continues to fight for his life, beating odds at every turn. With the help of his incredible wife, he has sought more than 30 various treatments and is back to lifting weights and working out three to four times a week. And we'll start off with how you finish with working out three to four times a week. That's on the break now that I've uh, just had just had a heart surgery, my third heart procedure, which was uh, finally a success. I've had autonomic nerve dysfunction, so I've gone through ablations. Um, I run a rapid AFib, and once they said being I was so fortunate to be where I am is because of all the exercise I've done throughout my life and through my recovery from concussions now. Um, I'm on a six to eight week layoff right now, not being able to lift my arm above my shoulder. And in that six to eight weeks, I'll probably lose about 20 to 30 pounds of just muscle slash just weight. Um, because with the concussions and stuff, I have muscle atrophy and fight that a lot. Um, just a little bit about my shared success is really fighting the symptoms. We have an incurable disease. Anybody that's had concussions, absolutely, you can make comebacks. You can, you can have great and tremendous, tremendous strides. But TBIs and once damage is done, it's hard to replace. You can't regenerate dead brain cells. Um, you see a lot of the stuff over, over the shelf. Oh, we'll create better memory. Um, to anybody that's had TBIs or can, you know any kind of concussion realizes it's the aftermath. And I call it the aftermath because that's really what it's been for the last 15 to 20 years of my life. Um, after stopping boxing, I had a great 10 years of retirement, um, enjoyed my family. I was a, a high paid sparring partner for likes of Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis, um, and a few other heavyweight champions of the world. And, um, just kept telling my wife after all the physical surgeries, something wasn't right. Uh, I just knew uh, walking out of the room to go get something before I even got to the other room, I'd forget what I was doing. Um, short-term memory stuff, not realizing what I had for breakfast that morning or even if I ate. Um, asking my wife a lot, what days today? Um, just a lot of confusion driving and then ending up somewhere I had no clue where I was. Um, so. In the last few years, my doctors had to take my license. Um, I was having blackout episodes um, from the brain damage and uh, with the blood pressure, ups and downs, pulse rate and heart rate just weren't good. Now, um, with the exercise, I found a guy named Andre Miller. Um, I don't know if you guys advertise, but it's a great organization, frontline alternative medication. And they, and they look outside the lines and they look at both male and females that's had injury and they work with, they started their foundation with veterans, um, people that's had TBIs through the military, concussions, um, and then they started bringing in the athletes. 
Then they did studies and found out how that may be, you know, went through domestic violence, any and all types of concussions, a concussion's a concussion. The story behind it is the story. And they have alternative medicine. They talk to me about testosterone. I went and had labs done. My testosterone levels were very low. Recovery to working out was very hard. Um, and they recommended me be on HGH, which is a human growth hormone, and testosterone once a week. So one, it would like the muscle atrophy, which it has, and two, it gives me the strength, it gives me the power and energy to want to work out and want to work out the recovery. Um, not saying that everybody needs to go jump out there and get on testosterone. Um, that was just for my body to be able to even endure lifting five pounds. And that's how weak I was. Um, it's the program that I got into and the routine. It's the every day. And I, for myself, have realized routine is the most important, important thing in my everyday activity. I went from retired, like I said, to disabled. And that was all within five years of retiring to finding me finally going to Hopkins and getting the testing we needed through a PET scan. And PET scans show, showed that my front and left uh, temporal brain was damaged. And that, that actually is an image that will show the plaque. And they in 2017 gave me sent me home on palliative hospice and was given one year to live and that was in 2017 um behaviors changes um we've come with medications with tbis which a depakote paxil is medications that they use and have done studies with paxil that you can actually regenerate dead brain cells. As I said earlier, you can't. <laughs> Paxil, only in a Petri dish has this been tested in, but they've done scientific testing on Paxil and it does regenerate. So I've spent years trying to find the combination of the right medications because there's so many out there that if you with your brain damage or with TBIs, uh, concussions, you have to be careful because some of these medications can, can do so much worse for you that can help. And again, the studies, you know, are, are limited and, you know, we're, we're finding this out by different, different places. So, um, it, Again, I thought I'd sit here and, and not have to worry about time, and I feel like I'm running out of things. But it, it's really my, my story is the fight of the symptoms. Getting to the poems, that deals with my mental, mental problems, the mental health issues, um, depression, PTSD, anxiety, um, things I've never had before. I mean, I used to travel with crowds of people around, you know, Lennox Lewis and Mike Tight, like crowds of people being in those environments was second nature. Now having the anxiety and the mental health disorders, the behavior started changing where I was very confrontational. Um, I was very quick to snap. Um, and thank God, I, 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 my wife of 29 years is a nurse. She's worked with dementia patients. Um, and she's also a saint. And she really, you know, she should be writing a book on the caregiver side and how to deal with patients and how to talk to people with TBIs because it's not all on us. And that's where I want my community of warriors to realize is it's very aggravating. It's very hard when your loved one doesn't understand that you're only quiet because you're tired or don't want to be, you know, say something wrong or you don't want to be mean. But 
though they don't understand that and it's it, I, I really just feel it's a constant letting my wife know I'm letting my wife know I'm okay but then I can also see when I'm not okay by the looks in her face the questions she asks and you know it's it's a communication thing but um I guess I'm just you know really fortunate and really really to the part of just pro exercise you know we can do this right from our homes you don't have to be in a gym setting um getting getting into these groups and and communicating putting posts out there we can't help and we can't know what's going inside you or you know unless we speak out and it it's hard to say that when there's days we don't want to get off the couch we don't we we can't look in the mirror without seeing emptiness we don't want to reach out we just we just battle the depression but that's that's the most important time to reach out and i just wish everybody and anybody could just find something whether it's drawing a picture it's um writing a poem singing a song taking a walk, something productive. Again, we're not gonna be able to take away the facts. We've had numerous concussions, the damage is done, but are we gonna roll over and just let that be the end of us? Or do we wanna fight the symptoms? And anybody and everybody that wants to fight the symptoms, I'm here to go to fight with them. And I'd like to help in any, any way possible that I can help anybody that goes through, you know, what we're talking about. And a lot of the meetings I've gone back and, and listened to your organization. You, you run a great organization. You have a huge foundation here and just love to see the people use that and use that channel to express yourselves, use that channel to reach out, ask questions. Um, I just think we all need to be a network of sharing. Um, you students keep rocking, doing what you're doing and learning because we're just here so you guys can pick our brains. We're here so you guys can see our behaviors. You know, you guys are the ones that have to come up with the changes and you guys need to come up and, and think of the things and share the things that can work. So that's pretty much I had. Like, if anybody has questions or anything, I'd be more than I'll answer any questions. I'm just not too good at going just free form like that. But I think that was about 20 minutes. Can you tell us some more about your poems, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's pretty simple. I, education was not my thing. I grew up in Southeast D.C., I didn't get out of the ninth grade before they finally just said, hey, we want them out of schools. Um, it, it goes deeper than that. I was adopted, abused from the time I was born, um, grew up in the crib, remembering my adopted mother coming in there, punching me like a grown man, and then just walking out, leaving me crying in the crib. So school, probably see spelling stuff on my poems, but one night I was just sitting here and I just wrote a poem and it was um, about taking care of me, like what my wife must go through and what she, you know, what she goes through being a caregiver. And it was almost like an apology letter I wrote her. And I didn't realize I wrote it in a poem form. And then when I wrote that to her, it started making me really just thinking, OK, Boom, PTSD. I have something for PTSD. Wrote a poem on it. My anxiety. Wrote poems on it. So I started charting my poems is, is, is my battle. And um, I post a lot of poems. There's, there was some in my story, but I've probably written over about 100 poems. I'm working right now on putting them all into a book or maybe making a calendar. We haven't decided yet. Um, but just something that shares and 
I've gotten just so much response from it. How, like, thank you so much. I can't speak these words, but they feel exactly, exactly how I'm explaining it. And I look at it as one, I'm trying to educate the caregivers out there, not the caretakers, because we all know the word taker. If you're a caretaker, you're not a caregiver. You know, and I, I always tell people, be careful which word you choose, because if you tell me you're a caretaker, it makes me think away. You shouldn't be taking anything. You know, being a caregiver is how you beat this and how you make it work is we're not gonna be the ones that's able to bend. I'm sorry. We're, you know, not trying to sound victimized, but we need our loved ones to bend. And by them bending, of course, it'll automatically change in our behaviors. But, you know, that's what we need. But back to the poems, um, just it, it's something that I just, when I've gotten through my darkest, darkest times, I found it so easy to write. Now that I'm healing, I haven't had any interest. It's weird. I haven't had any interest in writing in the last couple of weeks because this is probably the best streak I've had in the last 10 years. I'm just enjoying the ride right now. And I haven't had, I don't have negativity. I usually write to get away from negativity. Um, usually write to get away from hurt and just all those things I write about everybody can share because it's about PTSD. It's about anxiety. It's about feeling like a ticking time bomb. It's about not, you know, tired of people. Oh, Alan, you look so great. Well, if you only knew how I felt inside. So, you know, there's so many different things, but the poems have gotten me through. Um, I just got my, I just got my cure card. There's Lee, and I think she belongs to your group. She makes artwork and um, for Concussion <laughs> Legacy. She sent me that with a nice little note after my surgery things like that that's right there her way of sharing and expressing herself and wow it sits up on my mantle now and i look at it and the bright colors and that's what we need the networking we need to stick together we're a community but we need to be a voice and that's why i write the poems to be that voice And he, see, I just stopped from there. Look, I caught Emily. Sorry, Emily, I caught you getting a little bite in there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was eating small moments. Um, Alan, would you be willing, before we cut the recording, to share one of your poems? Sure. Let me uh, let me get, get on my phone here. I got not a problem. I'll, uh, I'll just, I'm trying to find something kind of just go in here. This is called my, my hour last my life, my life, like the sand going through an hourglass. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's fast. I look into the mirror, but nothing looks back. Is the mirror empty or is it just my soul? Because with CTE, I cannot control my actions, my feelings, my compassion and care. You look in my eyes, but nothing is there. And that's just, just a little one I wrote about just the hourglass. And then um, this is the one that they put out there is I once was the rock of, I once was the rock, our family power. That's before my brain began to turn sour. I was a husband, a dad that made everything great. Now every day I have to start with a clean slate. The things I say and the things I do often to get a reaction from you. I go for the jugular, knock you out at the knees. The words that I say only come from CTE. Now I can't make decisions or take care of the money. The thing's happening so quick, it's not even funny. I put my words down while I can understand. These words come from my brain right into my hand. My hands now express the thoughts and feelings we all go through. Where this will lead us, we have not a clue. This disease has no cure. 
But one thing I can say for sure, with the things that we go through in a day and still can't find in our way, to be caught between the stage of truth and fiction because my brain has so much friction. So my warriors without a voice keep battling the demon like you have no choice. We will not win this fight, but I'm fighting for the future CTEers, not just the mic. And that's just, just a couple, I, like I said. Thanks, Alan. Absolutely. Today I have Emily, who is also part of uh, the Mayo chapter of the Concussion Legacy Foundation, Nick from Concussion Talk Podcast, um, and his co-host Aaron, um, who is also the coordinator for the Newfoundland and Labrador Brain Injury Association, joining me. Um, Alan's uh, share was great, um, and I really liked his poems afterwards. Um, and we all had a really, really good discussion, too. Yeah, it seemed like it was very discussion based as he kind of started talking about the end, end of it is not the end, but you know, like the, the background of Snyder of his experiences as opposed to anything mm-hmm. running up. So it seemed like he does definitely able to talk more before or after or both. And yeah, I like the, the poems are very good. I wanted, I just was going to say the uh, thing with the poems are talking about how he, Wrote his blood to the way of apology and how it's just, it's not just the sufferers, the concussion survivors, but also their friends and family. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess he kind of touched on what I was thinking too that it's it's also them because they, they're just, they're confused too with what's going on. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know what's going on either. So it's not like it's their fault for getting mad or audio is booed. But if they get mad or they get confused, it's not, it's not their fault because they don't know either. They're just trying to figure out as well as you are. Or, you know. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, when he was talking about, like, the difference between, I don't know whether this was in our discussion or in his recording, I can't remember, but the difference between, like, caregivers and caretakers. Yeah. Um, I never thought about, like, that. I That was pretty cool. Yeah, it's the use of language too, and it's just really interesting. I found his, uh, what he was saying about his poems as well, like that right now, because he's on an upswing feeling really great, that he's not as creatively outletting. And I was like, that kind of makes sense though, because it's obviously a root of therapy for him to like let out his feelings when the negative comes on. And you don't always have to be forced to like make creative aspects, but you still can when times get tougher. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> the demon is coming out of the uh, uh, of the speakers. Is that or is that Emily? Is it you? Stay yeah, I'm gonna just, try and whisper. Okay, you. just just speak normally. If I speak normally, that's, yeah, that's fine. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a really really good share and I thought it was neat that we kind of access like some parts of the community that we don't normally access we don't normally um, like we have the occasional person pop up with probable CTE um, but we have what seemed like multiple people that are dealing with um, CTE type of situation um, and that was really neat to hear their struggle which you know has its similarities and has its differences. Um, I think it's amazing that Alan has continued past the three years he was given, but then, like, that's amazing. And what, um, what he didn't say is he, or maybe he did say it in the recording, but he had heart surgery, like, last week. He mentioned And he did this thing yesterday. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> right. and like, was, were there many people in your in your group that had that experience CT or dementia, or was it mostly the uh, same concussion survivors group? Overall, I would say our groups like concussions. Um, yeah. But the like the probable CTE, there were a few people yesterday that were there um, that joined us, and uh, it was also interesting to just see. Um, I mean, Alan kind of knew the one guy, and um, and they were 
talking about how, well, the guy was talking about how, like, how much Alan's poems have helped him and, like, um, his wife reads them, his mom reads them, um, and, like, they also kind of get a better understanding through Alan's poems. Yeah. Um, and it was also just, like, it was super interesting to see how, I don't know, it's different, but it's similar in the sense that, like, you're struggling, obviously, but it's super, like, it's very different in other ways. Um, and it was really cool to have people that do have probable CTE, um, come and join, um, the concussion group where some people, maybe it's their first concussion, um, and just like, you know, just differences and similarities. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that struck me is like, so you're talking about the differences and similarities is like, you know, with concussion and TBI, uh, people come in and it's like, oh, like, let's do this rehab to get you better, um, and your brain is just kind of where it is, and CTE is, a, like you said, a dementia, and we always yeah. think of it as that just going downhill, right? And at least that's how I've always thought of it, is, like, I was always nervous about having CT people in the medium because I'm like, uh, <laughs> like, how, how do we give you any form of hope because, like, your brain is deteriorating, right? Um but it was amazing to see that even in that, with him, you know, doing his exercises, doing his testosterone therapy, doing his creative outlet, that there are these ups and downs and that you can, you know, gain some quality of life back, um, even if it'll go back down. Um, mm-hmm. And I hadn't really ever thought about it, you know, being handled like that because, it, you know, I just always thought, yep, death sentence. I guess we're all kind of on eh. <laughs> yeah. and they're still all fed up, but like they can still do things to make, you know, I don't know. I just, do you understand That's what true. I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. Very true thought. <laughs> and, and, and you mentioned but, like one of the, the first episodes we did about, you uh, there's a, you met a, someone in one of the groups that was talking about how they are getting better, their brain is getting better. As they heal, and I think Erin's distracted by her cat now. Okay, yeah. I'm just saying <laughs> um, that Tess Tess is not talking to me, so that's why we're oh, here. Oh, it was Oh, um, and I was saying that Darren, you were saying that you were relating to that. Well, the first that you were talking to somebody who uh, who said that they are actually improving now because you know they had brain injury and I keep talking to Aaron and know the cat is. It's okay. okay. Keep going. Okay. No, it's just because like that actually improving and uh, and uh, and I guess I'm not sure how CD therapy works but uh, it's not like you know it's not just like I don't th- I don't think it's the same as dementia or Alzheimer's but I definitely had aspects of that but it's not the same thing I think but again now I don't know you guys are the CD group, the Concussion Legacy Foundation is CD group, so you tell me about that. Yeah. So there are like hundreds of different types of dementia, and that's what people don't realize. There are so many different, and maybe Aaron knows more about this, but um, they all fall into an umbrella, right? And Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, those are our, those are our big ones, right? But CTE is just another form of dementia, and and all of them are characterized by the brain slowly deteriorating. Um, the CTE, of course, as we know by the very, very strong correlation, not causation yet, but the very strong correlation comes from the traumatic brain injuries. I don't know if, Aaron, you can speak more to that, but it is actually, it's a buildup of tau protein, which is just like what we see in Alzheimer's. Yeah. Yeah, they all kind of... They fall within similar aspects, but they're each categorized by their own different symptoms. So, like, treatments will vary in that case, and, like, some prognosis will look better until you reach a certain point. But it's right, like, with, it's more so managing a disease versus, like, trying to get better kind of thing. Like, often we think about concussion, we see, like, oh, like, if you do this and this, like, you'll probably get back to, like, a good point. But it's, like... You can reach a good point within dementia, but you never know what's going to happen the next day kind of thing. 
it easily just kind of keeps building. There's no real stop or cure yet to it. So. Is there a uniform? Is there a uniform definition of of a of a non definition of uniform like partners of these de- different types of dementia? Like is that they? Is that across every every jurisdiction? No, so, well, like within dementia, because you have so many different things, like Parkinson's, you mentioned Emily too, like that doesn't even have real cognitive effects. It's more just irritation of your motor strip. So, like, you're just having physical effects, but like cognitively, you're still very there. Sometimes you lose like your speech and stuff with the deterioration of just your vocal cords and like all the physical aspects. But like, that's not even related to your memory. When you hear dementia, you always think memory is going. But like, there's so much more to it within every kind of subset. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and one I've seen a lot is Lewy body dementia, which is another whole different one. And so each one kind of has their own prognosis. And Lewy body is pretty characterized by some motor movements, but uh, they tend to have hallucinations, mm-hmm. um, and that can be a really big sign. Um, and some certain dementias, Alzheimer's, kind of sets on like over time but some dementias it's just like next day and all the symptoms appear at once so it, it really varies a lot yeah and um, i think it's like one of the reasons too it's so hard to define and tell people because all of them differ for like very various reasons and it's like oh well if we're gonna have to explain 20 different things to people that's gonna get a bit tricky um but that's why it's so nice to hear about that aspect and like for that community like he always talked a lot about having that community and speaking up and having your voice out. Like, I think that's really important because obviously a lot of those survivors and people going through it are only hearing like, oh, you have dementia. Like, this is that umbrella. Like, you must be experiencing this. And it's like, not necessarily like, this is my specific subset. And I want to hear from people who are also going through this subset and see that experience. Yeah, exactly. What I've kind of heard all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but no, he, uh, I like the, his point that he made with community, especially because I'm all about community rehabilitation and talking and stuff. And he uh, really obviously cares and wants to show that side. And then the fact that he was just so thankful for his wife and his family and everything and saying, like, the people who are there to take care of you and understand, like, it's hard for them as well. Yeah. 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 I, I, what is going on? That's weird. I took my speakers. Um, I, uh, I think that's another thing where it kind of varies with, like, concussions and CTE, though, is the... Because CTE, it's like, like Emily said, like, it's, it's a long-term thing. Like, it's not, you know... Um, so it is like the people around you that are taking care of you and stuff and there for you. Um, and, um, he, and same with the other person that um, has probable CTE, both of them were just very thankful for like their family that's around them and, um, like really acknowledged how hard it is for not only themselves, but their family. Um, and how hard, uh, like their diagnosis is um for their family as well but um i also just the fact that alan um he yeah he him being all about like community and like supporting everyone like i think at the end of the meeting he was like all like i will give my number out to all you guys like call me whenever you need someone like he was just just so and it was so genuine too like you could tell like he wasn't like just saying nice things to be nice and stuff and um he yeah he was just very genuine and he cares a lot um and uh it was also super cool to there was someone that asked him about like um if he was afraid of like returning to sports ever and like how he would deal with that and he kind of talked about um how like he trains two professional boxers now and how like sometimes it's really hard to like train them and like watch them get hit in the head because like he'll get flashbacks and like it's scary and confusing and brutal um because it's yeah just like 
flashbacks for him, but um, but then he was also talking about how like boxing saved his life. Like if he didn't have boxing, he would be dead or in prison. And um, and uh, he was just kind of talking about um, how like yeah, it's harder to watch it now, but he thinks about like where would those people be if they didn't have it kind of thing. And um, and to answer that person's like question about returning to sports, he was kind of like well can you do just like the training aspect? Like just kind of like he was really emphasizing like the check in with yourself, like what you can and like what you can do, what you feel comfortable with, like what you want to do. But then he also emphasized like, don't let the fact that like you've had a concussion, like stop you from doing anything because you can do anything you want to do. Like, um, and like maybe it'll be a little bit different, but, uh, you could still do, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the same thing that I understand about just being engaged with the community. And that's, that's all that's all it is, is like support, team support especially, especially in sport is you're training in the center with other people. It's just a, it's a community, it's a building community and relationships, right? so relationships with others. And I think that's mm-hmm. what's that's so big important. He obviously plays a lot of importance on that. Yeah. Definitely. Um... And I mean, his emphasis about how, like, a concussion is a concussion. The story behind it is just a story. Um, So that was cool, too. Like, when he was, like, he said that, I think, towards the beginning of, like, his talk, just about how, like, it doesn't matter how you got it. Um, Like, you're still, like, you still have a concussion. You're still experiencing these things. The story doesn't matter. And I think that's that's something that's really important I think for people to realize especially in the support group we've had people come in that are like super embarrassed to talk about how they got their yeah. um, question or embarrassed that they got a concussion from this one thing because it seems so stupid but it is just a story like no matter what like you did get a concussion from it it did affect you um, the story doesn't matter yeah. I think there's a lot of anger held within that too, like especially people who sometimes get injured on the job. Like there's a lot of blame and anger held within that and that kind of prevents you from healing in a way. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when you can't move past like, oh, well, my workplace, I had this in place or this in place. And it's like, yes, but like you also could have walked outside and slipped on ice and hit your head. Like mm-hmm. it really could have been anywhere that this happened it's unfortunate that there wasn't more protections in place and there should be but you know it's still just a fact of your life now which is more so the acceptance part so you just have to keep pushing forward with it I think like his experience with that too would relate a lot to the PTSD and like unpacking the trauma with that he would understand more those are it those are that's one thing Oh, I think those are excellent points, yeah. And uh, where can like where can anybody like are his poems all in a, in a book or they online? Or does he have them like, out somewhere? He's uh he's actually working on potentially doing a book with his poems. Um, but he does post them online um, on Facebook groups. Like they're in the CTE resources group. Um, now that he's in our support group, he's posted a few there too. Um, and, uh, there are a few other concussion support groups that are through like the concussion legacy foundation that I see his posts. Um, and I don't know about his Instagram, Emily, do you know if he posts anything there? I don't know. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, they're, they're all in like Facebook groups that are affiliated with the concussion legacy foundation. And he's been posting a few on ours too. And, um, all of our members have really uh, resonated with um, his poems and really appreciated them. Um, so that's also super cool. Yeah, no, I like when he shared it too because I don't really like poetry. Um, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I'm a very literal person. I don't like flowery language, but like his poems were just to the point, like yeah. clear language. And I was like, this is good. This is what I can interpret. Like, nice. And it kind of it just kind of shows. I mean, it kind of shows how this Alton Coney or I mean, he was a boxer. You don't think him like you know necessarily being the one to show like express through poetry, but there it is like it's it's, 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 it's writing and for even for if you're say a writer, 
and you get confession, then maybe yours is your expression will be more visible than you'd think, and it's just you never know. Yeah, really neat. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, um, yeah, he was he was great. I really it was awesome. Um, and I mean, I'd been reading his uh, like poems like on Facebook for probably like two years now, so it was cool to like actually like talk to him, you know. And um, he was awesome. Yeah. Emily, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say something to look out for is I have to call him today, um, which is not the day that you're going to hear this podcast, but... Um, <laughs> so, um, three days, three days. He want, he, uh, he want, we're going to plan a um, sort of weekly exercise um, event that he is going to coach through um, on Zoom. And it'll be stuff that you can do right in your house, either sitting or standing, just using household items. Um, and we're going to hopefully sort out a way to record it so we can put it up on our website if you miss it. Um, but just because he's, you know, as he will, he's constantly said, you know, that working out really helps him moving his body. And just like really, you know, we're not going to do like U.S pro boxing workouts are going to do nice and easy sort of like physio type stuff so keep an eye out for that nice. um, we're in the works very cool yeah. I mean yeah, another way like of others. building community um he's yeah he, uh he was talking about that a lot um about how much working out helped him and then um how awesome it would be to start this and the group all seemed like they loved the idea. Um, I think it would be awesome. So, yeah, excited about that. Um, so, uh, thanks again to Alan for uh, joining us and sharing. Um, thanks to Nick for helping us do the podcast. Um, and Aaron and Emily for joining. We'll have a new podcast posted Monday morning. Our upcoming podcast can be found on concussiontalk.com, Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Podcasts. You can find more information about our peer-to-peer -peer support group um, that is free and open to everyone on concussionmtl.com. We hold four weekly meetings on Zoom. We're always looking for Thursday morning speakers. Don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for listening. HeadCheck Health bridges gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. Join organizations like the Canadian Football League, Trek Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada who rely on HeadCheck to improve communication and optimize care. Visit HeadCheckHealth.com for more. The music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound. W www.bensound.com